Right, back again. <laughs> and I have changed my mind already. This, by the way, is the hinge. But first of all, I've painted my pieces. And I will be going over them with gloss Mod Podge to give it a shine. And I actually used a sponge dubber to paint on Ready Mix Paint. It's cheaper, more accessible, easier for people to find. So that's what I used. So, the covers. I'm still using the two pieces one which I have since covered in paint and the spine I think it works out at five and a half inches thick <laughs> something like that anyway the front will still be exactly the same with the door being attached on this side but the way I want the closure done I needed the book wider. So, the back <coughs> of the album. Now, you can make this out of one piece of chipboard, or if you can't find a piece of chipboard that's bigger than A4, um, you could stick together several pieces. So if you had like, smaller pieces, you could have um, like two pieces, have one piece in the middle, and the bit where that raises up where you've joined it, you put an extra piece each side so it's all level again. You get what I mean. But yes, so this has to be still 11 inches. And I think it's 9 and 3 eighths. It is 9 and 3 eighths. You don't have to be that precise. So I guess it could be 9 and a half, but mine's 9 and 3 eighths of an inch wide. And then what you need to do is figure out the space you've got left, which should be one and one eighth of an inch, and cut a strip which is one and one eighth of an inch by eleven inches. What's going to happen is, oh, let's see if I can explain this. Okay. You are going to have this here. This will be the base. You'll have your hinge. I say, for instance, this is the hinge. Not that it's going to be. Oh, well, no, it might be quite that big. <clears throat> and then this will be up here. And you'll have this gap here. So this is going to be attached to here. Okay, this is attached to the hinge. This is attached to the hinge on this side. So when it closes, it will be like that. And you will have a gap this side from the front cover. And you'll have a gap this side. And this bit is just going over there just to make it look pretty. And you'll have a gap on the inside. But that's it. So, you still need the two original pieces plus the door frame, plus the bits that go in the door frame. And then you're going to need the 11 by 9 and 3 eighths, or 11 by 9 and a half, and the 1 and 1 eighth by 11 piece, plus the hinges. Now we've got to figure out how big the hinges need to be. What I've done is I've taken uh, A4, uh, this is craft paper, it's about 250 GSM, so it's quite a heavy weight. And what I have done is scored one piece at three quarters of an inch intervals all the way across. And then on another two pieces scored it at three quarters of an inch intervals. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one, there's my 
join. There. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I've done. Oh, I don't know how many I did, but seven on one side and no, eight on one side and six on the other. I think. Anyway, you want to join them on those quarter inch. Uh, you want to overlap them on on a quarter inch piece, so they're overlapped. Okay, and what I've done is I've, I've bent each score line both directions, so all the score lines have been bent and are nice and flexible sort of thing. So basically what I've got is three pieces of A4 paper cut down to 11 inches this way, <clears throat> with three quarter inch score lines all the way across, except for uh, two and a quarter space on this side and a one, two, a three and a bit, a three inch space on the other side. Because what I'm doing is I'm going to have three quarter inch gussets and an inch and a half hinges. So this will, well, I put my Tyvek in back, I opened up an envelope, a Tyvek envelope, which um, I think it was the delivery of Tyvek. <laughs> So I opened up the envelope so that it would go across. And what I want to do is right. So I'm going to have the gusset. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start this part and say, right, that's my gusset. Okay. So I want to the first score line from there this will be attached to the page the next two make up the front of the hinge and the next two make the back of the hinge so that's four three quarter inch uh, spaces in between the score lines so they're going to make up the hinge and I'm going to have three quarters of an inch free and this three quarters of an inch is going to go inside the page. So this is why I had to bend all of them because this has to be quite flexible. And you're going to have that big gap there so you can really fill the pages up with embellishments or make them really thick and bulky. So the first flat piece is, we'll call it a gusset, it's your, it's your wing. The next two um, spaces to the front of the hinge the next to the back of the hinge the next one is a gusset and then it's the same again so the next two are the front of the hinge let's fold those up the next two are the back of the hinge let's fold those down and there we go so that's that bit there that's two i think i ended up with 26 25 or 26 score lines anyway so the next one is the gusset, the next two is the front of the hinge, so that needs to come up. Oh, this tie bit's making it nice and stiff. Uh, gusset, next one needs to come up, the next two need to go down. So that's the next one, I'm going to lay that down, so that's three. This is my gusset, these two are the front of the hinge, these two are the back of the hinge. Okay, this is my gusset, these two are the front of the hinge, and these two are the back of the hinge, which leaves me then with the last bit, which is the other wing. So I'll actually leave me with one, two, three, four, five pages, with nice big three quarter inch gussets and big hinges. Okay, so that is going to measure, if I want to include a three quarter inch gusset on each side, one, two, three, four, five, no, um, it's going to be, one. so I'm just trying to make these straight.
stroke one. It would be easier for me just to lay these down. It would be easier for me to lay these down. Right, two, three, four, five. So it's going to end here, plus three quarters of an inch. So my spine is going to be one, two, three, four and a quarter inches. So now I know my spine has to be four and a quarter inches. So I have to make two at four and a quarter inches. So, <laughs> oh dear, I am face palming right now. Okay, that was hassle. Yeah. Okay. Four and a quarter inches. Where did I put my? I think this is a spare. Yes, this is one that I. <laughs> used earlier to try and figure out what I was going to do. So I need two at 11 by four and a quarter inches. So if I cut one, I know that's 11. So four and a quarter inches. Move that over slightly. And I usually cut my chipboard with a Stanley knife. Oh, I've broken the blade on that one already. And the ruler. What did I do with my ruler? Oh, that's what I did with my ruler. <laughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. Right, so. Four and a quarter inches gives me two there. Just give me just oh, four and a quarter. Line that up. to there and I can't see it the other end. Line up again. Oh god, I mean, you could mark this with a pencil and then cut it. I'm lazy. I don't like to do that. So that's where it needs to be. And I end up squaring it lightly, my blade's too long. There. I score it quite lightly and then increase the pressure because I don't like to run the risk of cutting my fingers. <laughs> and I figure this is the safest way for me to do it, as I can't cut in a straight line anyway. through but it hasn't oh, almost I think this is thicker chipboard than the last one oh dear that is really taking some two of those. <laughs> so I'm going to cut another one and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm ready to put the covers together, I think. Um, I've changed where I get my Tyvek from. I found this place. I don't know if you can see that. It's uh, 20 sheets of 55GM, which is the size I use of Tyvek. And it's www.jill-i.am jill-i-am.co.uk So if you're in the UK, that's where I get my Tyvek sheet from now. As she was really, really inexpensive compared to a lot of the others. And they got here really quick. I think I got it on Amazon. I got it through Amazon. And it got here... I ordered it, it was free postage, it got here the next day. So, first thing I'm going to need is my base, which is the, oh, 
I can't remember the people. 11 by 9 and 3 eighths. 11 by 9 and 3 eighths. And on either side of that, I'm going to have the 4 and a quarter inch pieces. Big sill. And then I'm going to have the eight and a quarter by eleven inch pieces out from there. Okay, let's take this out of the way for a moment. This bit, which will go on the side, you don't need yet. That's a decorative piece, which will be decorated the same as the other side. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four. I'm just making sure I haven't lost any of my little pieces because that would be annoying. Okay. So I'm going to start with. I am going to start with the middle. Now, do I want Tyvek all the way up? Or do I want Tyvek? I don't think I want the tie bag right go up to the top. I think I'm just going to use it as a strengthening medium in between. Oh, but then I like as well. But then. Oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I suppose the first thing I should do is. I'm going to have it slightly shorter anyway. I'm going to have it this short. So, I'll take these three sheets and chop off about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half from the bottom. And so, once again, these are A4 Tyvek sheets. They're slippy, slippy, slidey. Don't throw those bits away, they, they do come in useful. <laughs> and then, I think I'm going to have them... Yeah, if I do them in here, I'll put them down. I think I might as well... Just use a sheet each for that rather than cut it in half and use one bit on one side, one bit on the other side. Might as well just use one piece. Yay. Let's get some thick tape. Or do I want my carpet tape? I think I'm gonna have my carpet tape. I'm about to get some new one because I'm running out. Once again, this is just paranoia. <laughs> now then, if that's in the middle, I don't want to put one bit that side, so I'm going to start. Um, yeah, I'm going to start roughly in the middle. And I'm going to start dropping things because. I like to drop things. <laughs> okay, let's get this tie bit covered. Now you could just use tie bit and normal double sided sticky tape, or just use the carpet tape. Basically, carpet. This uh, carpet tape is a double-sided gaffer tape, double-sided duct tape. It's a fabric tape with gum on both sides, but it's quite strong because it's used to stick down carpets, which is why I like it. So really, this is going a bit overboard. you 
seen me do, you've seen me do this a few times before. So I could, I suppose, just stop the tape and then... Oh, really go wobbly. <laughs> what I do is I do one side and then I, the rest of it I do off camera. good without my acrylic block. Oh, that's easier. <laughs> oh, dropped my paintbrush. Hold on a minute. Cat wants to come in. my little kitty gal. Whoops. She's Coco's mummy and she hasn't been very well. Have you Coco? Have you kitty gal? You've not been very well. No. No. She's mummy's little bye bye. She's mummy's little bye bye. Yes she is. <laughs> so yeah, this is kitty gal pal. Can you see yourself on the deli? Can you see yourself? Come on then, Mummy's going to carry on cracking. Curl up on the chair. There we go, baby. Yeah, she, she's been very, very sick, my poor little baby girl. Okay. So, what was I doing? I was doing... This has to go in the middle. This has to go in the middle. Oh, my dear. Okay, this has to go in the middle. I don't have to, don't really have to line up too much, do I? And I'll use this to recover that side for a minute. There we go. So now I want make sure that's lined up straight and then what a fair old gap so I'm going to have three eighths of an inch oh that's not straight look at that oh not straight at all not good. <laughs> so I'm going to lay that down there. So now that got a bit smaller there and bigger there, but it's straight there. Okay, then this side is going to be
one of the eight and a quarter inch pieces. So let's get this straight again. That's all straight there. No, it's not. That bit is not straight. Which is why it's not straight there. Oh. We will get this done. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to line that straight there. And I'm going to line this one here. Nice and straight. I get really, really stuck. <laughs> so I think it's because I've got a wobbly bottom. Could be because I've got a wobbly bottom. And that needs to be cut down slightly, I think. I have a wobbly bottom. <laughs> now, nothing to do with my age. <laughs> okay, leave the gap. Not that much of a bigger gap. That's fine. Lay it down. You know, that's ridiculous. That is all straight along the bottom and look at the wibbly wobbly bit we've got here. So, something is definitely not right. We'll try it this way around. <laughs> I mean, I know I can't cut in a straight line, but please. Hmm. Well, that's even there. That is not even there. This is definitely not even there, I don't think. Nope, that is out by a quarter of an inch, so I'm going to recut another piece of this, I think. one's any better. Measure between there, that is four and a quarter, four and a quarter, so that is good. Yes, this is not. Yeah, that's going to be better. Which means this one comes off again. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I think I've put some extra glue on here. But it's good that you can see how much I can muck up so you know not to do it. <laughs> That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. is scotch quick dry adhesive at least it would be if it would come out <laughs> and I think my bottle needs to be refilled okay slightly at the top and the easiest way to trim that is to lay this down like that grab this and say you are that much too big
There we go. Perfect. So, and the gap's still too big on this side. How did I manage to do that? Okay, glue's still wet. We're okay. <laughs> I'm having a gap too big is better than having a gap too small, but don't go overboard here. Yep, that's lined up lovely. Okay, so you can see me do that bit. So I've got to do exactly the same on the other side without the mistakes. So I have to put on not this piece, this piece needs to be recut because this one's a bit wobbly. Oh yes, look at that, you can really see how off that is from there. It's off by about a quarter of an inch. So, the piece that's right will go here, and then the other piece, eight and a half piece, eight and a quarter inch piece will go on this side with the tie back. So, I will get that done, and then I'm going to wrap everything again. I don't know what colour they possibly black. Yeah, black, because the front door's gonna be black. Okay, so when I've done that, I'll be back. Okay, I am wrapping this slightly different than I usually do. Instead of going round all in one big circle, I've done the top and the bottom first because it is so hugely long. Um, yeah, I've done the top and the bottom first, and now I'm going to do ends across here and I've done something similar before I'm going to put the tape on from the back going to do is my to that edge you know so I didn't press it down at the back haven't stuck them down, haven't pressed them down, you can then nicely miter in these edges too. Which is slightly more difficult but still very doable. And that'll give you the nice edge. If you're worried about, I don't know if you can see, there's a tiny, tiny white line where you can see the fabric underneath. The cheaper the duct tape, the more this white line will show usually because if it's proper expensive duct tape i don't know if you can see the weave of the fabric is quite close and it's very thin whereas on the cheaper brand it tends to be a slightly thicker weave a wider weave and a thicker fabric so you tend to be able to see the bits uh, the uh, the white slightly more. There we go. So if you're worried about it, you grab a black marker and just colour in the edges. And that'll stop it showing. So on this side, not that it needs it. do the same for this end. Now I am not going to cover up my joins, I don't think, with tape. No I'm not. 
because I'm going to have the hinge here. This is the back of the book, this is coming forward. So this is going like this. Ta-da! And hopefully not too flappy. <laughs> and I will have the magnets. Probably have quite a few actually. I'll, I'll probably do one, two, three, four, five magnets to hold this. And when you look at it from this side, when you put the door on, the door should be exactly the same width as the the inside bit of the cover. When it's all put together, so you get that bulk right in the centre, and you don't. It's not going to show anywhere else. <laughs> so, when it lays flat, it should be equal top and bottom. Shouldn't be. That's how you know if you've got it straight because it's not going to be hooked up anywhere. It's going to be nice and level. So, you just have to do this end now, and then <coughs> I'll do the usual the hinge gluing it together. I don't know what I've done with my hinge. Oh, there it is. You can pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> right, so I'm going to glue my hinges together and then um, glue my hinges together and get my gussets all um, ready as well, ready so that the hinge mechanism can go into the, uh, <laughs> into the album. And then it's a matter of doing the pages, and I have to decide whether I want pocket pages, normal pages, I don't know yet. But there's going to be five of them, and I've left plenty of room so they can be really, really bulky. That is the second part of the covers tutorial done because you don't need to see me do this. You've seen me do this before. I won't be putting the pages on just yet. I'll just be putting the hinge mechanism in. And because I haven't decided what... I haven't gone through my papers to see what papers I want or anything yet. And obviously these will be... Da -da 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 -da. Oh, oh. Not my camera. All the way over here. And that should fit in really, really nicely. And it does. With a quarter of an inch gap top and bottom. So, I don't know whether I'm going to have it craft card stock in the middle or not. Because this is really thick. So this is about 240 GSM. The one I've got on order is 170 GSM because I like to use anything between 160 and 180. It's nice to make the pages out of. But say so the hinges, I don't mind being a bit thicker as long as I can tie back them, it'll be fine. So you've seen me put hinges in before. I'm going to just stick the hinges together, stick the gusset bit down, make sure it's nice and secure. Da da, bing bang bong done and oh, obviously I've got to do this bit and then decide what I'm going to do the front covers in then I'm going to make the pages and then we will think about decorating the pages and putting the front door on this one's going to be so easy <laughs> see you later